Namaste, this is Mekla here from Pooja's uh, In today's video, I'd like to share with you my personal experience in astrology. Uh, what I mean to say here is that, you know, how did I actually get into this astrology stream in the first place? Whether uh, I believed in astrology at all or was it like, you know, it just came and fell into my lap. So what exactly happened which actually brought me into this? So, um, I don't know where to begin, but you know, I'd like to uh, share, uh, just open my heart out and tell you exactly what happened in my life. So, very early, um, right from my schooling, right from the time I was four or five years old, I had intense devotion to God. And I would visit temples and I would have my own puja room, like you know, my we lived with my uh, grandparents and so uh, she would do her own big puja mandir and you know pujas and we were not supposed to touch and lot of things restrictions were there uh, you know in Kannada we call it muddy muddy it's basically like um, you know being very should and pure in the physical aspect so we children were not allowed to go and you know uh, pray to the same form of deity in the puja room especially when she would do the prayers so uh, what I would do that time is uh, you know I would have my own small niche you know where I would keep my uh, form of whichever form of divinity I would want to like a small photo or a shivaling and uh, you know I would pray I would chant Hanuman Chalisa I would fast for Mahashivratri and uh, you know these kind of sadhana small small things I was doing and without my knowledge I was somewhere evolving you know and I would go every Every day I would go to Shankar Mat and do Pradakshina and do, uh, you know, take blessings of Shardamba and Shankaracharya. So this was a part of my routine. Like I would accompany basically, uh, I would go to accompany my grandmother and then, you know, whoever else came to her house and wanted to go to Shankar Mat because very closely situated and, uh, you know, quite, it's just one, it was just one road parallel to Shankar Mat in Bangalore so we would go and I would accompany them also Chalo, let's go so like a temple trip was like very much a part of me and then evenings I would also spend a lot of time going to uh, Ganapati temple there's a very huge Ganesha temple called Dodda Ganapati and he's really huge really really huge so we would go to his temple and there we had an option to do the Pradakshina around him and I still remember me and my friend, we used to go 108 rounds on Tuesdays, on Sankashtahara Chaturthi days and uh, uh, Ganesha Habba, like uh, the Ganesha festival, we would, uh, you know, go go around that and do namaskara go around do namaskara like literally count and do 108 namaskaras if i look back now what all i have done i cannot even imagine like how i could do it this kind of a journey i've had in my life and uh, we would walk to tirupati also like you know from bangalore we would go to that place Tiru tirupati and from tirupati to tirumala we would climb up by walk in three hours and four hours and those days even the path was very difficult it was not so easy to climb and we would do that happily we would do that without eating without looking sideways and seeing is there a bhelpuri stall or is there anything else like that we would never look and we would happily just go and do our part you know like um, we would just go and um, chant keep chanting some divine name sing bhajans and then just climb up so this uh, has been most part of my childhood and uh, I know without even having any strong prayer like I want this I want that we would do it like just go and do it and um, I still remember once without actually planning we got a chance to do Urul Seva. Urul Seva is like literally going and having a dip in the Kalyani like a small pond near Thirumala and in, in Thirumala actually and uh, I we would come out in wet clothes and just roll over the entire prakaram the we would circumambulate by rolling over the entire body would just like we would turn like like this and we would just like keep going one round so this is also one of the things that I have done and uh, I'm not saying I have done I have done but what I'm trying to say is at that age who prompts you to do it it has to be either your parents or uh, your own intuition gut feeling or god in my case my parents never told me go and do oral seva like you know go or uh, rolling around the temple do 108 parikramas they never uh, insisted on any of these things but naturally it came to me and i know that it's only god's grace and it was what was due to divinity from my end which is why i ended up doing all of that Amidst all this that was happening in my life, I want to tell you that, you know, most importantly, at that point of time, my parents were going through a very bad, rough patch. 
so uh, more of a financial crisis and no job for my father and you know they were going through a lot of pain and i was a young kid and i was just watching them doing a lot of uh, struggling uh, i was just watching them struggling to make their ends meet of course uh, you know with the divine grace a lot of people came and helped in um they were um, somehow managing it but you know it's not like they were not thriving they were not really good to go kind of a thing so um so they were not thriving and they were not really like oh, yeah oh we are fine we're just leading a normal life no not even a normal life you know that that was the state so uh, amidst all these things you know when my father wanted to actually go and uh, seek some help you know he would go to an astrologer and talk and you know i still remember you know i was still a very small kid and i would still have my own strong opinions and i would tell him uh, no no i don't think you should go what's the point we have so many problems and just going and looking at your chart showing your chart to somebody and you know he would tell you something you know how is that going to change and you know why are you so curious to know what's going to happen in your future you simply wasting your time and money and things like that i would tell him and my mother was also uh, i mean he, she wouldn't uh, you know uh, discourage him from going to an astrologer but she would neither be very keen so uh, not that i've never seen her accompanying my father to meet an astrologer so she would just give him that kind of a free way you know you want to go and approach somebody you go ahead and do it so this was how we've grown up okay so absolutely no background of uh you know uh, going to astrologers uh, taking opinions getting predictions and all that but the thing is that my ancestors i belong to the joyce sampraday so joyce is jyotish related so my ancestors have practiced astrology and they have read the panchang and you know this was this has been their vocation but somehow this generation gap and things like that uh, it has not passed on to uh, my father in a very uh, strong way that you know he should pursue a career he is an engineer basically so he didn't look at uh, pursuing astrology as a career at all nor did i by the way so this is how it came uh, into being and then i did my graduation and then uh, like a bachelor of commerce and then uh, after the commerce um, i did post graduation in public relations i, I worked in few companies leading national agencies and um, I, i learned the tricks of the trade i learned how public relations is and what we are supposed to do and things like that so what where was the turning point so if you see because of public relations is something to do with media talking to journalists and having your clients uh, material printed on um, or in that you know media so whichever it is whether it's newspaper or getting an online um, but that day those days uh, online was a bit less only i can say it's, it was more of print media and electronic media so this was happening but in the process i realized that you know people are ready to publish anything when it comes to uh, the or um, the current affairs and things like that but something to do with divinity and they're not so keen on publishing because there are not many takers but at the same time there are people who are interested in uh, you know talking about divinity spreading a divine word and things like that but they don't have a platform so uh, you know after consulting because in this process what was happening is i was also seriously pursuing spirituality and i have my guru my atma guru whom i would uh go and consult for everything that i was doing right from my college days and uh, so uh, i still remember that kurji said that you know um, you should maybe start a spiritual networking site wherein you know you collect all la- like minded people who want to discuss spiritual truths and you know get all the gurus teachings in one platform like uh, so we collated ramana maharshi's teachings we collated sai baba's uh, teachings through the satcharitra and we collated uh, Ram- ramakrishna paramahamsa's and my guru nimishananda guruji's uh, teachings so everything was like you know we uh, collated everything and we started this off and then you know we started getting good responses then we realized that art is also a form of a uh, very good learning it's a part of our culture so we should maybe include artists also so we in, you know invited many artists to come and you know to be, to be featured in our own uh, website and we call it satsang because it's a group of uh you know it's basically being in very good divine company so when the, all this was happening uh, i used to get a lot of um, feedback from people they would say you know teachings is fine but my problems are not yet resolved so please help me do you do predictions and things like that so then i said okay uh huh 
so uh, you know then i remembered what my guru said you know he would always tell don't go and try to uh, impart wisdom to a a hungry stomach you know because somebody who's very hungry he just wants his um, stomach to be full he is not interested in what we are talking or you know the spiritual knowledge the atman and any anything that we want to talk so he said that you know if people are not um, you know happy in their life if their problems are not addressed they are not interested in spirituality so first you help them tackle their problems and for a fact i know that you know when you are in problem i know the kind of pain you would be going through because uh, like i mentioned in the beginning that i have myself gone through a lot of things by just witnessing my parents suffer and in that age you cannot really do anything right you cannot being a child what can you do to your parents you can't help them in any way so i would really like my god when am i going to grow up and help kind of a situation it was so then i remembered that and i said yeah why not because i i think you know it's a great idea to help so how would we do it so initially i got in astrologers with me who would sit and do the predictions and i was the interface between my clients and the astrologers because there's always been a barrier of language the astrologers are very good but they have they function only um, in regional language they can offer the service and they cannot really uh, talk in english or hindi and things like that so then there's a problem right because people cannot their their predictions cannot be passed on to them so that's when i came into the picture and i started learning uh, you know how to interpret their uh, predictions to them to the clients and then in this process i learned astrology and then i also um, you know with the grace of my guru started learning astrology in a very full fledged way uh, so that you know it's just not predictive astrology you also know how the predictions have arrived so uh, the formal way of learning astrology this is how i got into astrology and uh, i can say that you know spirituality is a journey i think right from the time we are born if we look at what all we have done in our life we know that you know if we start introspecting uh, automatically uh, we will be in spiritual path because introspection is a very important part of spirituality the moment you introspect you become aware of how you were and how you are now and how you should be later so these three things past present and future in my journey uh, the irony is that you know i never dreamed that you know being a public relations professional i would be an astrologer uh, and i had strong opinions about you know uh, astrologers and how you know one should not really depend on an astrologer or one should not really seek an astrologer you should just flow with the flow accept life the way it is and see what whatever ha- comes you know just face it that that was my attitude but the moment i learned this wonderful tool called astrology this wonderful science called astrology i just fell in love with it i still am in love with it the learning is infinite and it's all scientific it's all proven